Welcome to the Project. Montpelier Design Review Committee meeting for Monday, May the 18th. I will let members and staff introduce themselves. Go right ahead. It's Eric Gilbertson. Seth Mitchell. Liz Pritchett. Martha Smirsky. Hannah Smith. And Steve Everett and Meredith. Yep, Meredith Crandall, staff here in the city council chambers. Sorry, you can't see my face at the moment. And Mike Miller, and I'm just gonna be trying to help out with uh, some group chats. If there's any issues that come up, you can group chat me, um, or I will try to reach out to you to try to get you if there's, if there's any specific issues that you're having that you need addressed. So just send them my way. Mike or Meredith. And Tammy Furry, the recording secretary. <laughs> Thanks, Tammy. You're welcome. And either Meredith or Mike, do you want to review the remote meeting procedures and process? Yes, um, I'll be doing that, Meredith. Um, so for anyone who hasn't attended a remote design review committee meeting yet, um, due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the design review committee is authorized to meet electronically um, and there's no physical location for this meeting. Um, in accordance with temporary amendments to the open meeting law, we're uh, providing public access to the meeting by hosting a video conference meeting, including both video and telephone access options through the Zoom meeting um, access platform. All members of the design review committee have the ability to communicate at the same time during this meeting through this platform and the public has access to listen and if desired, participate in real time. Um, everybody who's here can uh, see, I'm just going to pull up my procedures in case there's somebody who's watching on ORCA um, so that they can see the link here or the phone number to call in along with the meeting ID and password. So that's in case anybody in the public is watching through ORCA, they can still get to the meeting at this point. Um, we previously gave notice to the public on how to access this meeting on our city website. Again, that's shown here, where you can get a direct link into the meeting. If you have problems with access, um, you can email the meeting moderator, Mike Miller, at mmiller at montpelier-vt.org. If you're having difficulties while you're accessing the video conference meeting features in Zoom, as Mike said just a couple minutes ago, you can use the chat function to contact Mike and figure out how to fix those issues. Um, so if you are logged into the meeting and when you first log in, if we don't know who you are, you're gonna have an opportunity to tell the moderator which applications you wish to comment on. Everybody that's on right now are applicants, so I know, know what you wanna talk about. Um, when the chair announces the time for public comment on an application arrives, the moderator will unmute members of the public based on the order that you submit your intent to speak on that application. Um, if you're interested in speaking and you did not say that you would like to speak previously, you can raise your hand so that we can see you if you're accessing via video, or you can chat with Mike to let him know that you want to talk on a matter. Um, we'll also have a period where we unmute everybody at the end of an application to make sure that there's not somebody out on the phone that we just haven't been able to reach yet. Um, once the chair has recognized you to participate, if you're just a member of the public and not an applicant, the moderator will unmute you and will confirm that you can be heard. Then you can provide your questions or comments, aiming to keep them, their initial comments to two minutes. Um, and then the DRC members will have an opportunity to respond to your comment or ask questions of you. And the applicant may also have an opportunity to respond. Um, the chair might grant additional time for speakers who have follow-up questions or comments. Once you're done, your microphone will be muted again. Um, and then the chair will move on to the next person to speak if there is someone who wants to speak. Um, in the event the public, for some reason, is unable to access this meeting or we lose access, then the meeting is going to be continued to a time and place certain. 
Note that all votes taken during this meeting, meeting that are not unanimous will be done by a roll call vote. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Okay, thank you, Meredith. The next item is approval of the agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to approve the agenda. Second, Eric. And you, Eric, you seconded? Did I hear a second? Yeah, that was Eric. Martha. Oh, okay. All in favor, go ahead and speak to your approval. Aye. 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 When approving, we probably should speak our names so that everybody knows who, who said aye. <laughs> okay. 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 This is Martha. I say aye. <laughs> okay. I think it was you. Yeah. yeah, at this point, are there any nays? Nope. So we can go ahead and move to the first application for 72 Berry Street. Steve Ribellini, review moving two windows. Steve, are you there? Yes, I am. Go ahead and describe your proposal. Okay, uh, those two windows you're seeing on the screen now, they're actually both stained glass windows. Um, they're um, a number of years ago, some work was done in that house uh, to make it two apartments before my time of owning it. And uh, those two windows were lowered about three feet. Um, you can see above the stained glass windows where they were on that inside, back the previous picture, the inside one, you can see where they were right up above. Um, that's just been filled in with um, fiberglass insulation and they had lowered the ceiling in there to put in a little half bath there. And uh, we're removing that half bath and then want to put the windows back to the height they were because it's the hallway. How high up would they be moved? Would they about three feet, Steve, about three feet. So they would be above the top casing? Yes, yeah. Um, they would, you know, probably be about uh, where the different color shingles are. Okay. And That's where they were, Steve, right? Where, where they were. And that picture we're seeing the porch roof the arrows right on the corner of it now it must be the angle because that porch doesn't stick in front of the windows like that that porch roof is really to the beside the uh, left hand window okay mm -hmm. so the removing the stained glass windows back up would not interfere with that line of that porch roof right right Can you see the original framing where the location was in the beginning? Yeah, if you go back to that other uh, shot, uh, which is, I apologize, it's not a good one, but you can see where the uh, trim was. The wall's painted green and it was white, or I presume it was either natural or this white trim that's uh, there now. You can see where that was because there's a white area. Okay. Uh, I, I think what they did, maybe it was an energy conservation or something, or maybe they wanted to be able to see out the bathroom windows. Uh, they, they, you know, don't know. I, I think that work, work was probably done in the late 50s or the early 60s from what we've been able to figure out. Now, if, if you remove the stained glass windows, will you remove both of those windows, frames and all, and then yes. put, put clapboards back? To the original yes. location. Yeah, yeah. And you're putting the stained glass back, right? Back. We're just raising it up three feet, basically. The same frame, same windows. Sounds good to me. Okay. Does anybody have any questions, comments, or suggestions at this point? Well, no. the window on the left looks. This is Liz. It looks like it just has clear glass. It does. We had taken the stained glass out, Liz. 
um, just oh. to let a little more light in there while we were working there. And we didn't oh, want it to get broken. Um, and I said, well, we better take a picture before we take them both out or I won't have any to show. Okay. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so it's, it's there, it looks the same and it's in a closet for safekeeping. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, or suggestions? Not from Eric. Okay. No. Then I can go down through the recommendation form. Evaluation criteria, number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style. This seems like a, a preservation, certainly. Harmony of exterior design, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, none in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, building color schemes or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no change or nothing in this application for utilities. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, speak your name. Eric says aye. Martha says aye. Liz says aye. Liz, aye. Hannah says aye. Is Seth there or no? Yes, Seth says aye. Oh, okay. And Steve says I, so it's unanimous. Okay. Steve, I just have one more quick question. Um, sure. Which side of the building is, are these windows on? I drove by the building today and I couldn't figure it out. Well, they're actually on the driveway side. So you'd have to pull okay. into the driveway and just beyond that porch, you'll see them. Okay. All so right, they're, thank not, you. they're not on either street side, really. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Well, good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Steve, good luck. And good okay. luck with your, your ongoing work on the building. Okay, thank you. Uh, Steve, you. hold on one second. I just wanted sure. to let you know, um, I will be emailing you the recommendation forms once Steve Everett signs them and sends them to me. So okay. I'll email those to you and you can either sign them and scan them back or just send me an email saying that you received the recommendation form and you, you know, that you're in agreement with it. Okay. That's all we'll need to do. All right. Perfect. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, Bye. 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 We can move forward to the next application, which is for 5 West Street. Applicant owner, Jennifer and Sean Sheehan. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Go ahead and describe your application for the addition of the dormer to the, your previously approved project. Sure. Um, so the, the dormer, so we were in, you may remember us from the, from the fall. Um, we, we came in around the time that we, uh, I guess we closed on the house October, October 1st and uh, it needed a roof and returning the garage into an accessory dwelling unit. Um, so we were hoping to get that done before winter, but winter came early, so we didn't get the, the roof for early parts. And then thinking about it over the winter, um, we thought, you know, there's all that space up in the attic that, that isn't used and we don't have, um, think, you know, the ability or funds or anything to now, but, um, obviously changing anything to the roof before you put time to do it. So in, um, uh, and thinking about it, we thought about doing shed, doing two, two shed, shed dormers, uh, eight foot wide shed dormers on the, on the back, um, and trying to match the, um, uh, the style generally of the, uh, obviously the dormer on the front is, is a lot, a lot bigger, um, uh, but matching the style of, of, um, of windows and, um, and, and yeah, having the, the dormer there on the, uh, on the back, so they would be, um, you know, the eight, eight foot, eight foot wide. Um, and I, and my my drawing here didn't have the didn't have the over overhang, but would have the the fly um, rafters. And that was one of the questions I 
flag was the the overhangs on the the rest of the the house, um, both on the gable gable ends and the overhangs, and and also on the the front dormer is um, is twenty inches twenty inches wide, and um, and that it seemed like going twenty inches wide on a eight foot dormer would be uh, would be over overkill since you'd have eight foot of dormer and forty inches of of, uh, of overhangs on the left and right. So we were thinking a uh, uh, twelve inch uh, overhang on the on the left and right of the of the dormer. Um, the windows I, I included specs there would would be um, similar to the you know same number of of lights there the, the four by two on on each on each sash uh, having the mold mold windows there the the windows on the um, back of the house and the sides are are have a rough opening it's about three foot by uh, three foot wide by five foot tall. Um, so we were going with the mold, mold window there that would be, uh, each one would be three foot wide by five foot tall to, um, to match. I don't know if there's a picture that shows that there, there's one in the front already. There isn't one in the back. Uh, mm -hmm. let me see if I can. Well, it's like the the drawing Sean did, but in the front. Yeah, right, yeah. right on. Oh the, yeah, you can see yeah, it. Small picture we have there. More Meredith is highlighting. Yeah, so it's just one big, it's just one big shed dormer in the, in in the front. That has windows. Yeah. yeah, and it's on the second story. You're making the second story big, so this would be would be up up higher and on the on the back, and it would be two two small shed uh, dormers, but the um, style would be. Roughly similar there, and, and then we and we would try to uh, match the um, you know the the, the soffits uh, as as well with um, uh, obviously the same same paint color that we we'd put in for in the um, in our fall fall permit, but but also um, soffit is uh, five four inch strips, and we would so we would would match the same. Um, same strips in the same same style of the one by ten on the on the fashion. Are these the Marvin plaid ultim or ultimates or are they the integrity wood frame? Um, they would be the the the, uh, the integrity that are the I guess the elevate is the um, right. It's the it's the Ultrex on the on the exterior and the wood on the on the interior. Yes, yeah. wood Ultrex. And again, it's a simulated divided light with a spacer bar. Uh, correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, does does the drawing show exactly how those windows, the new dormers, will um, relate to the windows below? You know, you know what I mean as far as spacing goes. Yeah, they they um and as of with with the current first and second floors don't line up exactly, um and these these wouldn't um either they would be the, the two mold together the one on the right would be um roughly over the second <coughs> floor window there and then the the inside mold window would would be to the inside of that. So the, the one that Meredith has the arrow on, um, so the second floor, you can see clearly the three windows on the second floor. And then underneath the porch, there's one that doesn't, you know, right there, Meredith, you got it. The one on the left there, it goes out a little bit further to the left than the one above it. Mm -hmm. Then the kitchen window is right below that second one. And then the third one doesn't line up at all because there's a door there <coughs> into the kitchen off the porch. So that's what Sean was saying, but I don't think you can see the look, the first floor windows very well. Yeah, so looking at, at lining at lining them up, we were trying to have roughly the same um, space as on the front of the house from the edge of the house over to where the start of the dormer is. It'll, it'll roughly match um, that, which is two two bays. Um, you have the the end the end rafter. Uh, and then two bays, not not including the bay between the 
the fly rafter and the and the end the end rafter and then that would be um they're, they're two foot on on center in the existing attic so we would be tying those um taking up four well the three bays like taking the four stretches of of the rafters um for for the dormers and looking at how they would would line up on the um on the windows yeah like Gunny said they would be. We should have set up in the backyard for this meeting because we could have just turned the computer. <laughs> <laughs> we could do that. So in, in any case, on the dormer, the outer window of the double will line up with the window below that. Yeah, and then and then the other window will be um, to the inside of that. We have two sets of mold windows, right? Uh, correct, right. One one yeah. set in each in each of the dormers. Yeah. The dormers don't line up with the windows below that. Um, no, no, not no, not not exactly. But uh, yeah, I, I see it was just was just saying that. I don't know how much the the. The outside, the outside window of the pair of the mold, mold windows, the one on the outside edge will, will roughly right be right over where Meredith has the mouse pointer there over, over the second floor window. And then the right now where she, she's putting the next, uh, the pointer now is where the, um, in that case, the left, uh, the left window of the, of the mold unit will be. I, I would, uh, I suggest that if if they're not going to line up exactly, I would make sure they're they're out of alignment enough so it doesn't look like you tried to line them up. All right. Yeah. So, so having something four inches off, I I don't know if your if the placement of your dormers is critical. Well, that. The first floor and second floor aren't lined up, and plus also the porch doesn't go the whole length. It's kind of short or cut short too. Yeah, I, I just want it not looking like you try to line them up and didn't do it right. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> the, the window, the windows are irregular enough on this building that, uh, and also I think uh, it's consistent with the style to not necessarily have everybody everything line up. So, right. Uh, what, what you can do is you're building this, you can, obviously you can, you can, do a uh, a mock up and move move your sample back and forth so that you can determine a balance that looks like it it's in harmony with the rest of the building on the back side. All right. <clears throat> Any other comments, questions, or suggestions? What, what are the sizes of the windows on the second floor? Um, they're they're uh, they're roughly well the rough the rough open is about three foot by by five foot so a little bit a little bit smaller than that. Yeah. Um, so the wide. intention of the dormer windows is to match the the relative sizing that you have on the second floor. Yeah. So, I mean, your your. Uh, the paper doll uh, on the on the roof that represents the dormer really isn't so much to scale, right? Um, right. Yeah, I think um, it's a lot more squat than the than the ones below. Yeah. 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 I had 
had a hard time with that. I think from the from the perspective of the, the camera, I tried measuring it out with the whatever doll I, I had there. And when I did it to scale, it made it look like um, it was going higher than the than the peak of the of the back of the house, whereas in actuality it'll be tying in um, you know a few feet below the below the peak. Um, and so that was the that was the uh, the trade off there. That took the so is is the center window on the second floor centered on the building? Um, that's the bathroom. Um, right. Yeah. So that one that one isn't three foot by five foot. It's just the one on the left and the right here. A three foot by five foot um, bathroom, much shorter. So, so is that center window actually centered on the building itself? I believe so. I haven't measured it exactly. I certainly could. To the eye, it looks. Um, well, actually, the the left side it looks like more space to the left of that window than there is to the right. But maybe it's just the angle he, Sean took the picture. Yeah, to, to my eye, it looks like it's centered and then you, each side window is equidistant. So it, it appears to have symmetry. Okay. To me, I mean, at least. Yeah. And, and to that yeah. end, I think it would be better if, if there's nothing preventing you from reinforcing that symmetry uh, by bringing it into alignment. I think that would really be best don't much care for the misalignment. It seems seems like seems strikes me as a little bit odd. I understand first floor not being aligned to the second, but they're fairly close in proximity with proposed dormer and second floor. It would seem like you'd want to make an effort to align. Well, which way would you align? Because I think there's an equal distance from the edge of the roof to the start of each window. Would, are you saying you'd bring the windows in? So I, I guess it's a matter of it, if that's the case, then then the second floor isn't symmetrical, right? This looks like it's lined up now that the dormers are lined up over the the outside windows, the two windows. Well, the, one, the one on the right looks like it's off center, and then the one on the left looks like it's mm -hmm. the ball is centered. Yeah, that's hard with a perspective to deal with that. The way yeah, I, I guess it's yeah. what, what. What is the intent? Well, um, I mean, I, I guess on that was looking from being centered was really starting from the point of of the base that would that would match and. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for the picture it wasn't wasn't lining up from actually measuring it it looked like i think as steve was saying earlier relative to the picture here that these would be squeezed a little bit more towards the um the squeeze more towards them a bit so that the the outside unit of the the mold the mold unit um would be over the the second floor and the um, and then right the inside one would be would be more right over that over that space. Um, you know, having having said that, if we think it would be better to try to line it up with that middle line over the middle of the second floor window, um, I'm saying we could, I guess uh mock that up or move or particularly if i guess there was some leeway um between making it a either an eight foot bay or a 10 foot bay if we i think to get it to get it perfectly centered we may need to go one more bay over to the um to the edge, which would leave just just the the two foot um, you know the two foot buffer between the start of the the dormer and the the edge of the house plus the plus the twenty inch overhang. Um, 
I guess it would be a matter of, right, of, of, uh, of measuring that again or working with her. Yeah, I guess so I, the windows are, yeah, the windows are three feet. So if you had, you'd need like a nine foot window width to center it, right? Well, no, I mean, together there are six foot, it'll be a six foot wide rough, rough opening, but as far as where those, um, right, where those bays go within that eight foot. But what if you align the jam, like if you were to justify the jam of the, let's talk about the left side, if you take that left jam for dormer and align it to the left jam of the second floor window, then you're just, you're bringing it in more towards the center. Right. And then if you mirrored that to the other side, then they would align, the three foots would align up and then it would just jog over. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we could, we could that do would that. You, that would pull you away from the edge, at least at the roof. Right. Yeah. It re reinforces that symmetry to some extent. Yeah. Yep. And okay. and better to have that, as you're saying, that better to have the windows line up like that and not have it not have the windows be centered in the um in the dormer. So in other words, if you have three foot on one side, the thing might have uh, three foot on one side and one foot on the on the other. Um of so so if we have oh I'm sorry not 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 three and one I mean so six six foot rough opening so rather than having an even one foot on either side of the uh, of the window well well no I mean of the of the the shape the cedar shape rather than having one foot of the cedar shape um well I guess it'd be even a little bit less that than that with the with the window frame. But that the the window because the because the dormer will be tied on the um, the rafters that are that are existing that are that are cut out to make sure that it it lines up over the the window we might have. Um, are you in that unable dormer. to put in new rafters? Um, well, was, I was going to double up the existing rafters and obviously have the the new the new rafters of um above on there but rather than um cutting i guess to, to minimize the number cut out um was going to double up the, the existing rafters on the left and right of the of the dormer there yeah i guess you just don't you don't know what you'll get until you dig into it right right I thought I saw somewhere that the rafters were 20 inches on center. Um, they're they're two feet on center. Yeah, the the, the 20 inches is the um, is the overhang on the um, the soffits and on the on the fly rafters. But the the uh, the actual existing rafters are are 24 inches on center. And now I, what uh, what are they? What two by 12s? No, they're they're actually only two by sixes. It kind of blew me away, but I guess they had good wood back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's a that's a, a, a little light. Yeah, they're 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 the original two, but so they're 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 the rough cut two by sixes. They're true true two by sixes, but they're still still just um, two by sixes, and they're and they're really long too. I mean that that full you know, if that's a uh, thirty foot long. They seem to just be one, one piece this, from what I can. To me, is this that space currently unfinished. Um, currently unfinished, yes. Okay. Well, well, I should say partially finished. They had started to, previous owner had started to um, insulate, so it has uh, it has the baffles, um, it has the baffles going from the floor level to up about nine feet high um, with uh, insulation over um, rigid foam insulation over. Uh, the ventilation baffles, but and then above that, so from about nine, ten feet high up to the up to the peak, you can you can see the the rafters. So from the collar ties. From the collar, right? From the collar ties up, yeah. Did you consider uh, a single dormer like you've got in the front, a bigger single dormer? Um, I think our main reason for 
um, it's a plate. Yeah. doing that. Yeah, it's twofold. One, it seems like it would be a bigger engineering feat. And number two, with, with the ventilation pipe, I mean, I know we could just extend the ventilation pipe and go up through the existing dormer there, but it's actually a couple couple of ventilation pipes that uh, come up and then tie together. So they'd be probably, right, you can see the one. Yeah, so that top one actually, the very top pipe, right, where, where Meredith has the pointer now, that's going to be coming out. That's that's nothing. The, the former the former owner had a um, August, AGA August stove. stove, yeah, and the piping went. So they took they got rid of that stove and the piping. So that doesn't tie to anything. So we'll be roofing over that. But right, the one where you are now, that that's the plumbing ventilation pipe there, and um, and a couple pipes. Uh, so from where it is now, and then if you move the pointer to the left you know, 10, eight, eight feet or so. Yeah, right right about there. Um, there's another pipe that comes up and they, they join each other. Um, and so that space, um, right. I mean, like I said, we could, you know, we could have extended the, uh, the pipe up and doing that, but it seemed to be making it a, a bigger project. A lot of, um, for the front dormer is supported by, um, I guess, well, it's just a different, I guess it's a different situation in the front because it's over the porch. I just, just wanted to ask the question. Yeah. The, you, so you're, you're kind of re restricted to 20 inch leaps as you move it, if you move the, relocate the dormers, right? 20 yeah. yeah. Roughly, yeah, roughly. Yeah. Two foot. Well, of course, I don't think it would hurt at all to add a rafter at some point in between the 24 inches to support the walls of the dormer. Right. Uh, you could put that anywhere you wanted to in there. It would cut the 24 inches at least in that location. Yeah. Okay. So you could just, you could move it uh, 12 inches and have put an extra rafter in. Okay. To take care of it. Right. And that would probably be a good idea, I think. Yeah. yeah that would be my vote, that it seems a shame to place the dormers, misalign the dormers based on rafter layout, that if you're already in there digging around, to add new rafters that would allow you to place the dormers in a more symmetrical fashion uh, and support your the, the sidewalls of your dormers possibly better. Seems like a worthy endeavor. I agree. Okay. Can do that. So, so Seth, Seth and Ben, would you want to give them the option of centering the center mullion over the window below it, or yes. centering centering the left window of the dormer over the window below it? I, I think I it makes more sense out, to. I should say I, the out, not left, but the outside window over the window below it. I, I think it makes more sense to bring the outside windows up into alignment because otherwise you're pushing the dormer out too close to the edge of the roof. Yes, no, I agree. Okay. I think that would give the best symmetry if that works for you. Right, so, so, not, so not doing the center of the mulling over the center of the second window, but rather doing the outside window the outside square up window, over this. The outside window of the dormer is over the window below it. Right. And then the other window of the dormer would be inside of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And depending on the way they built the house, that might give you a better alignment with your rafter spacing anyway. Right. Yeah. I'm sure the suggestion of one dormer. Um, and in the front, it, the dormers don't just stick out by the windows, it goes all the way across. So two of them are actually behind us, and then one in my our son's room next door. Um, so it could go all the way across, connecting all the whole unit together. And we could put one small window in the middle, or not. I don't know. But I hadn't thought of that before until someone suggested the one dormer. I I could see the structural problems with that because you got a lot more span. Yeah. Between. Okay. Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know about that stuff, though. So. Yeah, I was talking to, to um, yeah, to Wolf, um, some on that, like the engineering, and yeah, it sounded like with the wider span and that, that lower, it becomes a bigger, bigger project. You could count on Chris Temple to steer the way.
So Seth, you think make that suggestion that the outside window of the dormer line up with the window below it? That would be my suggestion, yes. That's fine with me. Okay. Any other questions, comments, or suggestions regarding the dormers and the windows? And then cedar go shake. Ahead. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, cedar shake for the material. Ah, uh, yes, yep, yeah. yeah, same, same cedar shake, same. Uh, the exterior, same yeah, the exterior of the house is um, a brown cedar shake right now, which would be becoming gray. Yeah, yeah. The the house. And the roof, you'll match. Right. Yeah, the roof we're having. Yeah, the roof we're having done. Um, so the roof and the painting is what we put the permit in in the um, fall. We have that lined up to be roofed in um, in early July and painted in in, uh, in late July and and um, in August. So so this would be done prior to that. So it could all be uh, roofed and and um, painted together. Thank you. I highly suggest using plenty of water and ice shield on behind the siding as well as under the shingles. Right. As far as the- uh, Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, you keep getting cut off, you go. <laughs> okay, I was just kind of curious about um, the windows, the new windows and the two dormers. Uh, are they about the same size as the windows on the front dormer? You know, um, uh, these are all I've been measuring to get new window shades. Um, they are all 36. They're the same width. So they're all the same. same but the living room has these huge windows. That are right. Yeah, the first the first floor. Uh, the first floor windows are, on the front. are wider on the front. But but right as far as the front dormer, which was your question, that they would be the same size. Um, but they're okay. they're just single single windows, not not more. Right. Yeah, they aren't. Right. Yeah, they aren't double. Yeah. Or, okay. I, I was just oh. wondering your recommendation on the because you said there were two options for the width of each dormer, eight or ten. Oh no, I think. Well, I think I think the suggestion they had of um, right staying with with eight but moving it if okay if need be was a was a good a good one. Um, the question. Um, I was going to ask was just about the the overhang. Um, the mention that it's a 20 inch overhang and the rest of as we were thinking 12 inch on the left and right of the of the dormer here, although was also told that that was something we could kind of look at in the by an architect that we could look at in the field too, just to see if um, you know more than 12 inches was looking too too wide or too heavy. Um, but I didn't know if that was anything that you had thoughts or suggestions on. If you pull it in and align it, um, there's probably less of a reason to go with 12, or at least 20 is a safer bet, but I, I have no objection to either dimension, really. I okay. think what's important is that it that it scales out appropriately. Okay. We could we could give you give them the option to go with anywhere between a 12 and a 20 inch overhang. Okay. So if in as you're laying it out, if it looks like 18 is better than 12, you can go with 18. Okay. With whatever in between. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, suggestions? None from Eric. Okay. Then I can read down through the recommendation form on this one. Preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed projects in the historic district involves an historic structure acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials acceptable. No landscaping proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, none applied for in this application. Recognition of and respect 
for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house acceptable. And then the recommendation was that the suggested placement of the dormers was such that the outer window of each dormer lined up with the window below on the second floor. And then an optional change, the overhang could be anywhere between 12 inches and 20 inches. Based on that, all in favor, speak your name. Eric. So Liz. Ben. Martha. Hannah. Steve. So it's unanimous. I have, I have one other suggestion that as you talk to your engineer, uh, ask him about collar ties. Yeah, yeah, we had had talked to him about about that. Yeah, because the, uh, the collar ties are below where it would be be cut. So right, we are going to look at putting up um, above. If, if I, I, you didn't say whether it had collar ties in it or not, but uh, it, it really it cuts the span of your rafters. It adds a lot of strength to the roof. Yeah. Yep. And this would be the time to do it. Right. And again, much of the structural part of this would be inside anyway. So you're free to make it as sturdy as you want. Right. <laughs> Great. Well, thank and you all. It's approved. And thank you very much. And good luck with your project. Yeah. Thank nice you. to see all of you again. Yeah, great to see you. Appreciate the input. Yeah, the suggestions are super helpful. Thanks. Thank you. I will circulate the recommendations forms for you guys to take a look at, and you can either send back with your signature scanned or just confirm your agreement with the recommendations via email. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thank good night. You. Okay. I want to read record her comment for when we come up for review. Your suggestions were super helpful. <laughs> we had to take note of that. Okay. Uh, That's been duly noted, Eric. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. Catherine, I can't seem to unmute you. Can you unmute yourself? Sure can, hi. Awesome. We're all Zoom experts by now. <laughs> okay. So, Steve, you're all set to move on? Yes. We're on to the next application for 180 Main Street. And again, applicant honor is Catherine Codius. Pronounce that for me. Yeah, you got it. Okay. And describe your fence to us. Sure. So we came before you before for a privacy fence, um, in part because our um, neighboring yard had some like detritus in it that we were hoping not to see anymore when we were in our backyard. Um, but we actually never built the fence and now have reason to fence in the whole backyard so that um, essentially it's a three sided fence that connects to the house so that um, creating an enclosed area um, for our dog and uh, future crawling babies. Um, so <clears throat> the fence will be wooden with um, uh, treated wood so that it's, uh, yeah, something like that. Um, <clears throat> pressure treated pine is what we're um, thinking will be affordable and aesthetically pleasing and in concert with some of the fencing projects we've been seeing around the neighborhood lately. Um, and we're going with that, um, a similar look. I think that the, we will have, we are hoping to have pergola style gates, assuming the committee, I know, um, fine with that look. And we're not gonna do this dog-eared um, posts that you can, or not posts, um, boards that you can see here, I don't think. Um, I just think we'll do straight across. Um, and yeah, so the fence facing Main Street, we're asking for a variance to get it 10% above 4.5. We hear there's precedent for that. Um, and then in the on the side, we already have the approval, um, although the, 
design is slightly different in that it's going to be um, wood instead of white. Um, I think it was vinyl, what we proposed before, but um, so it'll be six feet as a privacy fence uh, looking towards the neighbors. And then the back of the property, which just faces our own driveway um, and cannot be seen from any street, North Street, nor Main, will also be four and a half um, with the variance, ideally, if we can get it just because we have a, a tall dog, but we'll see what DRB says about that. Um, and I'm trying to think if there are any other details. Oh, that there would be a gate in the front and the back. So you could enter from the driveway side and you could enter from the, um, the main street side. And I guess I should say those who are not familiar with our property, we're up on sort of a mounded hill um, at 180 Main. So we're at the corner of North and Main and you look up at our house. So the fence will not be right up against Main Street. Um, you have to crane your neck from the sidewalk to see our fence. Um, because it'll be set back from the hill, it won't leave much, much of an impression on Main Street past Ryers or a car. I mean, you really wouldn't see it unless you were walking down J Street. Um, and then you would be able to see probably your sight line, like three quarters or half of the fence. Um, and again, sort of looking up because we're on sort of this little hill. I hope I did an okay job describing it. I think that's, those are the, those are the details. I tried to include some of the um, trees around in that photo so you could get a picture of what's there. There are hemlocks that line the neighbor's edge and a large um, crab apple that uh, faces Main Street. Uh, a quick question. Have you can, did you consider using cedar rather than treated? Yeah. I, I really hesitate with kids to have treated lumber around. Yeah, I mean, I would consider untreated pine. I just don't think we can afford cedar. I mean, it would it would astronomically raise the price of an already expensive fencing project. It depends on where you get your cedar too. There's there's a couple of places to get cedar where it's fairly cheap. There's one in Walcott, I believe, and then there's one up in Albany. That that's all they do is cedar. Authentic log homes is the name of a, a good supplier of cedar. Okay, um, John Gallup of Gallup Fencing, I believe is doing the project and hmm. suggested it would be um, significantly more expensive um, to, do the, to, to do the cedar option. I, I would check the prices of some of the local uh, suppliers. That's, you know, uh, Yeah, it depends if you're talking Western red cedar or Eastern white cedar, they're radically different prices and the Western red is very expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the the difference between what the look of the pine, like that brighter look versus the um, the cedar that weathers silver would, would not be my preference personally. But I mean, I guess it depends on what the committee's thinking, but that silver look, I feel like, wouldn't go as well with our house. But. I, but I don't know what's the toxicity level on uh, the treated wood these days, but basically it works because it poisons stuff. So I, that's not really a design review issue, just a suggestion. Okay. Yes, yeah. Meredith, I don't know if you can, I've, I'm sharing a screen. Is this, this is the, what your things look like at your property at this point? Can you see? Yep, just a little more mode. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but I just wanted to make sure that people understood where this bank was so that they'd get a sense. Yeah, so you can see the corner of the house there and the fence would begin along the corner of the house and there'd be a gate. And then it would run along um, the length of the yard to the corner, almost to that big lilac bush, but not quite. So it's similar actually to the footprint of our house, which is 20 by 40. So it'll be sort of mirror image of the footprint of the home. Now, was your intention to either leave the fence natural color or to maybe tint it with a, with a 
a stain to make it slightly darker to blend in with your landscape? Um, I, we had so far just been thinking about a natural color, but it's just hard for me to envision once it's up there. I mean, I'm not opposed to a stain to help with longevity and, and definitely with blending, but um, I don't think I would take it too, too dark. Um, yeah. Well, that uh, treated wood takes paint a lot better after it's sat for a couple of years. There's, there's some really good deck and siding stains that you can slightly tint or darker tint either. I mean, your option of tinting uh, that you can get natural colors, which look really, really nice. And again, after you leave, if you use pressure treated, you can certainly the pressure treated that's available now is less toxic than it was 20, 30 years ago. And again, after you leave it for a, a, a short period of time, e even 60 days or so, it'll take a stain fairly well. Yep. And it's, okay. it's pretty, pretty easy to stain it and it will last for a long time. So again, that could just be your option. You know, once it's up and you look at it against the house and against the landscaping you have there, you could decide to at your option to stain it a little darker color if you thought that would fit in nicer with your with the site. Sure, and we could try to match it to the stairs, which eventually needs some love as well in terms of a stain. So. <laughs> Does anyone else have any comments, questions, or other suggestions? No. Nope. Just one. Catherine, have you been to North Franklin Street and looked at the new fencing behind Hershlet's house? Actually, yeah, that's actually the inspiration for. Um, yeah, my guess house. is that's a hemlock. Oh, interesting. And that, and that there's a pressure treated post. I mean, pressure treated is valuable when it's in ground contact. Yeah. But as far as, like, you know, if, if wood can get the air like air and it's not just holding moisture and i'm certain that that's a hemlock that will just doesn't i don't know that he's going to put a stain or anything on it but oh, okay. that is that would be something i would go look at or talk to them it's a beautiful fence i think yeah, jacob but... rogan did the work there but it is uh okay. that is not a pressure treated material there yeah okay i could ask andrew for sure and um and you know talk to talk to our guy about it who did you say did the work there then jacob rogan okay cool uh so but, sure he's got a busy summer but who knows <laughs> yeah but who knows but it is worth just i, I figured that was the one you were referencing so i exactly. i know a little bit about that project awesome okay so yep Any other questions, comments, or suggestions? So again, it looks like you have the option options for yourself to use other wood materials for the fencing, whether that be cedar or hemlock or what other materials that might be available that you might prefer for any number of reasons. And you also have the option to stain the fencing after a bit to suit your plan for whatever landscaping or design you want the fence to blend in with. Awesome. Great. And I can go down through the criteria for this application as well. Number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure. Acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, not proposed with this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, again, no utilities proposed. Recognition of and respect for view corridors and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. 
All in favor of the application with those options for the applicant? Martha says aye. aye. Beth says aye. Hannah says aye. Steve says aye. Kevin says aye. Awesome. We've got you all. Okay, good. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so I'll send you the, again, I'll send you the recommendation form so you can review and just acknowledge receipt of it and that you agree with the recommendation forms. And then I will see you uh, on June 1st at the DRB hearing. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes from the May the 4th meeting? Yes, I'll move yes. it. Yes. Eric moved for approval. Do I hear a second? I second it. This oh, okay. is Martha. Sorry, I, I couldn't understand <laughs> who it was. All in favor of the minutes of May 4th? Say your Eric, name. I. Martha, I. Hannah says I. Seth, aye. Liz, aye. Steve, aye. So the minutes are approved. Any other, any other business to bring up? I have a question for Meredith. Meredith, usually at the end of our live meetings, you collect all of the materials that we have. What do you want us to do with these written materials? Uh, you can just shred them, recycle them. I collect them and recycle them. Okay. Um, so that's that's the only reason I usually collect them unless something's been passed around by an applicant and we're not having to deal with that now. So you can okay. just do whatever you want with any printed materials that you have, have made. Okay. Thanks, Martha. If there's nothing else, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Eric says move. I second it. This is Martha. All in favor of adjournment, speak your name. Eric. Uh, Hannah. Yeah. Martha. Ben. Steve. <laughs> so meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you, Steve. Thank uh, you, Meredith. Thank you. Uh, Meredith and uh, Mike for making this work. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Mike. Thank you very much for the all coaching. Right. <laughs> You're welcome and I will see you all and hopefully by then you'll be able to see me on June 1st. Okay. Oh, good. Bye Thank now. You. Thanks.